So I'm a big fan of the F-86, and since I play a lot of War Thunder, but I didn't have the plane unlocked yet, um, I decided that I would instead just go ahead and try to design um, a foam board remote control F-86 instead while I was still grinding out that aircraft. So I guess in this video I'll be going over how I used Fusion 360 to go through the whole design process. I'm just, it's been a while since I actually looked at this Fusion 360 file, so I'm just going to go through each of my component cells, mention something if I think it's important. So first off, um, I basically just googled up some three view drawings of the F-86, um, and I put them each on the respective planes, and I lined them up, you know, so that the fronts of the aircraft would line up, the side profiles would line up, and everything, so it would actually be meaningful to use them. I go ahead, I went ahead and basically put each main component, um, sorry, each main part of the aircraft as its own component, so I started off with the wing, there. Um, so I'm first just lining up how how I'll be extruding it out. I made the whole main wing using a sweep, as you'll see in a second. Um, I used a sweep because I was actually more familiar with sweeps than lofts at the time. Um, in hindsight, I should have done that with a loft, mostly because if you look here, um, that's like we'll see what that is. Expect. So it's like 0.413 inches, but close to the tip, it's not 0.413 inches, it's actually quite a bit less, and that's because sweep scales, you know, as you get further out, or it only scales if you as you get further out, if you're rails get closer together if we go back to this one right you can see that the rails get closer together and so the sweep tries to account for that shrinking everything and the reason why that's bad is because your foam board obviously does not you know shrink as you get out it still maintains the same thickness um, I went ahead and um, just said that, that was okay because it should approximate it pretty well and the wing did turn out fine. Um, I'm lining up the wings just like that with you know the two halves coming together even though uh, in the end it's gonna have like a rounded tip. Uh, maybe I'll add a picture or something. But it, the the wings should be approximated pretty well by just by joining those two. Uh, yeah it's a it's got like a pretty standard cambered wing. Nothing too crazy, nothing too special. Um, next, I go ahead and make my two wing spars using loss, like I should have for the wing. Um, that way, the spar thickness this way is maintained, you know, because, you know, each of the foam board spars is going to be running like that. Great, thanks, Windows. Um, so those were made with lofts. Um, I made the tip using um, a patch extrude and use that as like a split body thing. We can look at that real quick if I turn that on. So I just went into the patch environment, extruded something up and used that as a cutting surface. That's what I do a lot to make any kind of cuts. Then I go ahead and remove those bodies just so they're out of the way. I do another splitter to make my aileron. I do a quick offset and push that face uh, more towards the wing tip so that you know I can have a gap for my control surface. Uh, next, what is this? Spar split. Oh, um, so this guy, I don't, I didn't, you know, as you get closer to the wing tip, um, I didn't need the spars down the entire length, so I just basically just reduced the length of the spar. 
Um, here is kind of the messy part. So I really needed to have tabs coming out into the wing, or sorry, out of the wing. Uh, no, uh, I needed tabs coming out of my spars going into the wing. And so I basically drew a, I created a sketch on the face of the spars internally. Uh, let's see if I can, yeah. So I drew on the spars and then I extruded two little rectangles, top and bottom, coming out. And then I cut away from the wing, eventually at some point. Cut away from it. So now I've got spars with tabs, which will line up very nicely with the wing. I also cut a, um, a hole for my servos, uh, even though it doesn't cut the way through. You can see that there's, I didn't extrude too far just because it would start to nick into my spars, which is definitely something I could have designed better, but I didn't extrude all the way because it doesn't need to. I'll be just exporting this top face into a laser cut. So as far, so further down the line, like none of my other CAD steps will notice that little paint. So that's fine. Um, I just go ahead and Oops, I go ahead and mirror everything. And then in here, I'm, because of the way the sweep turned out, if I try to make a sketch on, okay, so like I can make a sketch on that, right? So that works fine. But I can't make sketches on most of these faces on the wing because even though they look flat, we go into zebra analysis. All right, even though they look pretty flat, um, they're actually like maybe like a millionth of an inch, like out of like there's a millionth of an inch of a little twist in it. So that's that's basically why I couldn't create a sketch on them. But to get around that, I use the construct a point, a plane through three points, and I select like that point, that point, and that point. I create a plane, All right? You see that's like, it's pretty much the same. And since it was so close, yet far enough that Fusion wouldn't recognize it as a flat surface, I take that and I project, I projected that surface onto a sketch. Uh, and the reason why I need to basically export all surfaces onto a sketch is I'm going to laser cut this. So I need basically all the outlines. That's the whole reason why I'm cutting this whole thing. Because I need I want to laser cut my plane instead of trying to freehand it. So I go ahead and I do that for the rest of the surfaces on the wing. Moving on from the wing, I go into the fuselage. So I'm just gonna turn off the wings real quick so we can have a nice view. So the wings are done. Going into the fuselage. I think I turned off the sketches, yeah. So I just started with a general outline. I, I didn't, I could have made it a lot more precise. Um, but like I said, I was just trying to go with what felt Natural. I mean, if I make it too precise, then of course I'll be sacrificing some strength and I'll be wasting a lot of time and it'll be significantly harder to build. Um, yeah. So the next couple things I did was I'm basically creating planes along the length of the fuselage and I'll be using those to define cross sections we go through that, I can really show. Yeah, I basically use those to define cross sections for the entire width of the plane. And I'm going to use those cross sections, turn off the sketches. Basically, I use the loft tool and I connect all those cross sections and that basically forms, here, let's turn off the canvases, we don't need those at the moment. That forms the basically the, in, a good portion of our fuselage right there. Um, I went for a, a diagonal because square 
in my opinion, is too much of a deviation from a cylindrical fuselage. Um, so yeah, so I just went for octagonal. I mean, I could have I try I could have tried to do something that was like a perfect uh, sphere, not sphere, uh, cylindrical oid ish, but that would be very hard to export to some CAD. Um, here I'm just creating a quick nose shape of sorts. Um, I didn't end up using it, so it's not too important. Go uh, pass a bit. Yeah, I didn't end up using it. <laughs> Did use that half though. So I did I did a lot of parameterized design this whole thing. Uh, so a crap ton of them. And unfortunately due to me getting a little lazy with projections and stuff, sometimes um, changing parameters does mess a couple things up. So that's why I've got a couple of yellow guys, especially back here. Um, what I'm what's being made here is basically uh, do I not have? Yeah. At the rear of, let's see if I can find one. At the rear of the F-86, uh, there's like a little bit of like a box popping up. So uh, that's what this is. It's not too structurally important. It does help keep the tail a little vertical. Uh, you can see the outline of the tail that's starting to take shape. So tail's pretty simple, you just draw like a tail, and I've got like tabs in there. You can see it hidden a little bit. I'll extrude those at some point, I think. I used a whole bunch of combines to basically just make all my slots and stuff, rather than trying to CAD the slots. Uh, even though I have a rudder uh, in right now, I never, I ended up not making a rudder just because I didn't have a good servo placement and I didn't think I need it needed it, so I don't have a rudder, or didn't eventually build a rudder. This is me cutting the horizontal stabilizer, it's pretty much the same as the vertical stabilizer. A whole bunch of stuff, make tabs, make cutouts, yeah, cutouts for servos and whatnot. So going into the canopy, uh, is, is the canopy not on? No, I didn't. I didn't make it yet. So the canopy was definitely a big mess to make. I used um, th the patch environment for the whole thing. You can see down there; it's all patch environment stuff, and it was a combination of extruding surfaces and like trying to stitch them back together. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> Eventually, it pops up. Yep. So that's like the canopy. Um, yeah, I'd probably try to think of a different way of making the canopy other than patch patchwork. The reason why I did a patchwork kind of thing is I didn't... I hmm, guess I could have done it with lofts once again, but I wanted to... Hmm, not actually sure. Yeah, probably I'll do it with lofts next time. Just do everything with lofts. Don't try not to do patchwork. Um, what's going on here? Ah, yeah. So here, uh, I had the wings turned off. So basically, I need needed to make a cutout in my fuselage. And basically, how this worked is, you know, since the wing isn't solid, there's actual um, there's actual like space in it. So if you when you, when you do the combine. Um, you get some junk left behind that you definitely don't want. And I eventually had to do a bunch of split bodies along faces. And I just keep splitting it until all the junk pieces that I have are isolated. Then I take those out and then I come recombine everything that I split. So basically uh, it's a pretty janky way of making that cutout, but it did work. Uh, moving on. Oh, so I've made 
two bulkheads for the EDF. So, yeah. And then I made some tabs for them, put them in place, do the whole draw the tab, but then cut it out of other things using combines. Um, oh, here I'm basically designing a battery deck. Um, Nothing actually really fits inside the canopy, so everything needed to have its own deck. Um, this part's just pretty straightforward. Do some extrudes, do some cutouts. Let me turn, let me let's see, fuse, take off the tip. Yeah, you can see the battery tray. Pretty straightforward stuff. I made some cutouts for two servos. These will eventually reach back and control my elevators. Um, I could have put them back closer here, but I wanted to, I didn't want to have to deal with wiring it all the way up to the um, receiver and stuff, which would be up here. Here I'm making some formers, basically stuff that will help me hold the shape of the fuselage as I'm gluing it together. This is kind of a, a last minute thing that I added to. And here is just me selecting a whole bunch of faces for export. I think the entire rest, yeah, the entire rest of it is just me exporting faces. So basically, you know, you create a, you select a face, you create a sketch, and um, basically each of these sketches is a face. And then you can export those sketches, bring them into AutoCAD, and voila! You stitch them all together and then you have something that you can assemble into the fuselage. Some ex miscellaneous components. This is the nose, canopy, wings, tails, miscellaneous stuff. Yeah, so from that basically is how I built the plan. I just sent these to a laser cutter and everything works out. I think the whole rest of it. Yep, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's my first video, I guess, so things could be a little sloppier. Oh, uh, this thing is just a thing to measure the dihedral. Not measure, hold the dihedral of the wing while I'm gluing it. So if you imagine a plane coming out from here, uh, it, that would be like a flat table, and then you just put this under one side while you're gluing it, and that gets your nice dihedral. But otherwise, that is basically catting a plane. Yeah, I didn't go too much in detail into parameterization and stuff, but you definitely want to have parameters, otherwise designing this thing will be a nightmare. Yep, so that's catting a plane.